Hi, I'm Joseph Ferraro and welcome to Bugs Among Us. Behind me are two of my favorite subjects to photograph and a bit of a spoiler as I go on, um, they're actually all my favorite subjects to photograph. But in particular, this is a small sweat bee and it's on some bee balm in my backyard. And these sweat bees were uh, some of my favorite like subjects to photograph early on and what actually drew me into becoming a macro photographer as I encountered them and was like, oh my God, I can see pollen. Oh my God, this small you know, creature, what is it? And I realized it's a bee and it's a native bee. And um, that there's all so many of these bees like around us that we're not really kind of aware of. And they're just absolutely beautiful. They're kind of a treat. And they're actually make, they, they make really good subjects because they really don't pay me any bother when I'm um, photographing them. So it's beautiful. You can see like she had collected some um, pollen honor probably from the, the blanket flowers and the coreopsis that I had uh, growing in the yard at the time as well. And next to her, we have another one of my favorites um, are the jumping spiders. And this one happens to be a daring jumping spider or bull jumping spider. Um, it's a juvenile. You can kind of tell by the, its coloring and in the wild um, by the actual size as well. And if I remember correctly, uh, this one was actually photographed on milkweed leaf, and this was taken at the Belle Isle Nature Center in their pollinator garden. And they're lovely subjects. They're so much fun to photograph and interact with because these two forward-facing eyes will track you, and they'll follow you as you're photographing them. And sometimes they decide they want to jump on your lens, and sometimes they jump away. Sometimes you'll look, and you'll see they're either on you, your hand, the camera, the lens. Um, and then they're just so much, they're there, they're so much fun to interact with and they're so beautiful uh, to watch. So, thank you. This is a Serotina. It is a small um, sweat bee. Sometimes they're called um, small carpenter bees because they uh, use the pith from uh, like stems to actually line their nesting tubes. And this one is on some chive in my backyard. And I love on, the, on her back leg, you can see the two, two different types of pollen that are there. You can see like the greenish pollen from the chive, and then you can see the yellowish golden pollen from probably the coreopsis and or the blanket flowers that are actually found in my backyard as well. Here we have a wonderful little leaf cutter bee um, photographed at the Belle Isle Nature Center. And this one was kind of rusting, sleeping. I believe I'd have to look and see if it was shot like closer to, it was like fallish, and also probably later in the day. Um, so it might have been um, just taking like a little bit of a break and nap and. This is a little looper a caterpillar um, on some aster, photographed. I believe this one was also photographed at the Belle Isle Nature Center. And um, uh, the asters are just such a wonderful uh, flower to photograph against that, you know, brilliant, you know, violet. And then the, you have the, the greens and the yellows of the looper contrasting against it. And then you can see one little thread um, of uh, silk coming from the caterpillar um, that is actually attached to the, you know, the aster, uh, aster petals. We have a lovely goldenrod crab spider photographed at the Belle Isle Nature Center. And crab spiders are kind of fun because some of them can change their color when they're, um, um, whatever, depending what flowers that they're actually hunting upon, they can actually change their colors to match the flowers um, so they become sort of invisible to the insects that they're preying upon. Oh, these little flying gems, Agachlora pura. Um, it's a golden green sweat bee. And this one was photographed at a bio blitz, which 
I was working with with Oakland University and BioBlitz is our um, there are scientific events where you go out and you survey a species or a particular species, but you do it during a set amount of time during that day and or like week. It's a set time period that you're actually doing this like uh, survey on. And this one is this sitting on, I believe is a black eyed Susan um, uh, flower. And they're just lovely little bees to photograph. I love the, the like the iridescence and the green in them. They're just so, so beautiful. And we have a wasp here. Um, this is a European wasp, um, not a native wasp. And I believe this one is also a male. It was photographed at the Belle Isle Nature Center. Um, kind of fun because most people like they see wasp and they're like, oh my God, I would never get so close to it. And you're like, well, if you know the difference between males and females of wasp, you can kind of, you can play it safe because you know that the males are not going to sting you. And in this case, I also love just their um, expression and the way they look like dead on into the camera. They're just, they are, even though they're not a native species, they are very, so very beautiful to look at. This is a wonderful case of mimicry. And in this case, it is a fly disguising itself as a wasp or bee. And um, it does a pretty fairly convincing job for most people when they look at it. They go like, oh yeah, that's a bee. And you go like, no, you can tell it's a fly by one, um, its number of wings. It only has two wings where bees have four. And you can also tell by the antenna and also the, um, the size and the placement of the eyes as well. Um, but lovely creatures, they actually do some incidental um, pollination and their larvae are wonderful predators to have in your garden to keep it like safe from garden pests such as aphids and other, other, um, other pest insects. So they're voracious little, they're, they're larvae, voracious little hunters. Here we have um, a mason bee in a bee hotel that I have in my backyard. I installed quite a number of years ago. I built a few uh, bee hotels and within a couple of years, I had uh, mason bees that were in the area deciding that, hey, it was a great place to call home to make, you know, use the, the tubes as nesting sites. So this was taken in the spring when the, uh, the bees were emerging from the brood from the previous, previous summer. And they're amazing to be out in the spring and just watch them like happily buzzing around. They're, they're so docile and um, peaceful. If you stand in front of their nesting tubes, most of the time they just bump into you and be like, oh, what? sorry. And then they go off their way, you know, looking for pollen and nectar to bring back um, to their nesting chambers. This is a longhorn uh, bee that is taken on a sunflower. And this was photographed in Detroit at one of the research farms for Oakland University and absolutely love um, how that back leg is just, almost just pollen coated and so furry. And it's interesting, it's fun trying to photograph into the sunflower because they're like rooting around in it and they're actually rooting around pretty fast. You think like, you know, larger bees, like they'd be slow and like ambling and they're not quite the case. They actually can move quite rapidly. Um, but the coloration is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. And they're, they're beautiful creatures. And here is a bee that is most common to a lot of people, just a, a, a bumblebee. And this one is on some blanket flower and in my yard. And you can see on her rear leg, she's starting to amass some pollen. And you can tell too, like uh, in the case of bumblebees where they're doing, in this case of like these bumblebees, that where they're doing a wet pollination collection. So they're actually moistening the pollen with some nectar and packing it onto the, the, their legs. Um, where a lot of the other bees that you see are actually all doing dry pollination, like electrostatic pollination. So they actually do not wet the pollen when they're collecting it. And 
And here we have a Helictus bee on a black-eyed Susan uh, flower head. And this was also taken at the same uh, uh, bio blitz as the Agaclora. And I just love um, how, and this is a good case of that electrostatic like pollen collecting where the pollen is all over her body and she's not packing it down um, with nectar. She's actually just going and she'll deposit the pollen onto, onto her legs and the hairs will actually collect it um, actually quite well. And they make um, wonderful pollinators to have around too and a fairly common, um, fairly common bee in Michigan.